For this next drawing we're going to be creating a cylinder. Now for this cylinder we're going to do the same sort of thing that we were doing with our cube shape. So we draw our Y. Now if you notice our Y is slightly left of center this time. The next thing we need to do is we need to draw our V, so decide the height of our cylinder. So you can see these lines are heading towards each other. And then we need to do the book cover. On this left side, we want to try and make this look as square as possible. But on this side, you can sort of go as short or as long as you want. So I'm going to go a bit longer so you can really see that cylinder shape. We are then going to box in the top. So boxed in the top. And you can see that's heading over in that general direction. The next step we need to do, like the cube, is turn it into a block of ice. So we're going to drift these lines so they're heading all the way up towards where they need to go and down. So it looks very similar at the moment to a cube, but it's also different because it's more rectangular in shape even though we have the square face there. Now, the next thing we do is where we actually try and turn it into a cylinder. And so for this, I'm just going to highlight sort of two faces so that you can start to make sense. I don't want you to highlight this on your drawing, but it just helps me explain it a little better. So we've got these two faces. Even though they look different shape, they're actually meant to be the same. It's because of the perspective that they're different shape. But this is the front face and this is the back face. For each of these, what I want you to do, each of these four lines that are yellow on the front face, I want you to roughly just put a little dash on halfway. So halfway of the back four lines as well. So one, two, three, and four, we put a little dash. Now, the next step is we're going to draw some curves to make this into a circle shape on this end face. We want to draw two types of curves. So we're going to do some nice sort of tight curves, some smiley faces, and we're going to do some curves that almost look just like straight lines. So for the straight line curves, we do those on the obtuse angles, and the nice sort of tight curves we do on the acute angles. So these two here, and there are obtuse. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate that for you. So you can see it kind of looks like a smiley face, and a bit of an upside down smiley face. And we do the same on the back as well. So we're trying to do our best to stay within the square as we draw it. And then these back ones, you can see almost look like straight lines. They're curved a little bit, but there's not that much curve in them, especially compared to the other ones. So they're not straight, but they're not super curved. Now we've got our two circles. The next step that we need to do is join from the bottom across to this side, and join from the bottom, sorry, the top across to this side. Now you can see we've actually made a cylinder there. The next step is we need to firm in our cylinder. So I've gone quite firm on that, so it's going to be really hard, I guess, to make it sort of stick out even more. Hopefully your lines are a little bit lighter, but when you do outline yours, so I'm just going to use the whiteboard marker uh, to illustrate in this one, but I would love it for you to do it with your felt tip pen. I just want you guys to see how it actually stands out. So if I do this, nice and as light as I can with the whiteboard marker and then along the bottom like so and along the top. This is where everyone gets caught out usually with the cylinder. When you do your firmed in lines for the back circle we want that one to stay very faint. We don't go over that with our felt tip or in my case the whiteboard marker. So we've actually got our cylinder shape there. The next step is we're going to add a bit of colour. So Maybe on this front face, remembering we don't need to be too concerned with staying in the lines, but just getting a nice angled technique going. And the other thing that we're going to be doing for our cylinder is some rendering on this side. So there's a number of different ways. You could go left to right like that. Another way that you might want to do it is to emphasize that curve shape. So you could go this way as you start to do your cylinder colouring. So you can see I'm starting to add that in. 
what's also important is you can start remembering trying to make it look like lights bouncing off it as well so what I'm doing as a technique is I'm going slightly darker from about two-thirds up and over the same section again and then I'm going to go slightly heavier again about a third of the way up and then I'm going to try and go you know quite heavy again on the bottom edge because that bit's hidden from most of the source of my lighting so you can see that it actually starts darker and moves and gets gradually lighter. The next step we do is we outline our shape. Now it's not going to, oh, it is going to work nicely, which is good. So a nice thick whiteboard. Remembering whenever we do the whiteboard marker, it's to draw the viewer's attention in. And we only do it if the shape was to be cut out. So if we imagine I had to cut this cylinder out, that's what I outline with my whiteboard marker. No other lines. And then we can also chuck a nice sort of drop shadow on it just to make it look like it's sitting on the plane. And usually with the drop shadow we can just get a little bit lighter as we move out as well. So that is our cylinder.